consider that you have a surface in phase space. The surface is S0, as shown in the left-hand side. This surface is composed by unique combinations of point Q and P. At a given time t in the future, the action of the Hamiltonian will be of transforming the surface S0 on the left-hand side onto the surface of the right-hand side by mapping each pair QP into another pair QP, changing the coordinates and positions. The Poincaré invariant theorem states that the action of the Hamiltonian is such that the area of the surface remains the same. So let's now prove this theorem. Consider the area in phase space to be the integral of the QDP. So Q and P are vectors. Let's write these vectors in terms of scalar coordinates U and V. The same thing for P. So that instead of writing dQ dP, which are vectors, we write them in terms of the Jacobian and the derivatives of U and V, where the definition of the Jacobian is the determinant of the matrix of derivatives. So if you want to prove that this is constant, what we're going to do is that we are going to calculate what is the ADT. So let's advance the time, go from T to T prime, where T prime is T plus delta T. Now then you have new points Q prime and P prime at this new time, which are the new points in phase space from Q and P after the action of the Hamiltonian. Graphically, that means that you had a point on the original surface, called this the point QP, and by the action of the Hamiltonian, it got mapped elsewhere on the new surface, this being the new point Q prime, P prime. So you can write this new Q, Q prime, as being equal to the original Q plus dQ, dQ dt times delta t, and the new P, the pre prime, as being P plus the derivative of P respect to time, delta t. And through the Hamilton's equations of motion, dQ dt is the change in the Hamiltonian with respect to momentum. And dP dt would be the negative of the change of the Hamiltonian in position. So we write the first equation as Q plus dH dP dt, and the second one as P minus dH dQ dt. And as the area at the time t was the area integral over the surface as t, the new area, A prime, with the new coordinates Q prime and P prime, is going to likewise be the area now over the surface as T prime that was mapped by the Hamiltonian acting on the surface as T. And now the coordinates QP in the Jacobian are going to be Q prime and P prime. So let's calculate the Jacobian. The Jacobian is the determinant of the matrix of the derivatives, which then equals dQ dU dP dV minus dP dU dQ dV. If we're using all the coordinates Q prime and P prime, then this is the same, but with the primes. Now, if Q prime is equal to Q plus dH dP delta T, then the Q prime du is equal to the Q du plus the second derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to U and P delta T. And similarly then for the momentum, P prime is equal to the momentum minus dH dQ delta T. Thus the P prime du is equal to dP du minus the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to U and Q delta T. If you substitute these expressions for the derivatives of the primate quantity into the Jacobian, then you find the original Jacobian plus a term that depends on time with these four mixed terms. The derivative of the area then in time, we take the limit of A prime minus A over delta T in the limit that delta T goes to zero. So given the definition of the area, that's simply the difference of the Jacobians. So now we substitute the Jacobian 
at the time t prime. And this is the expression that you have for the area. Now the delta t cuts on both sides and then you get rid of the limit. Now we can prove that uh, what is in this parenthesis is equal to zero. For that, let's use the chain rule and write a ddu as dq du ddk plus dp du ddp. And the same thing for v, ddv is equal to dq dv ddq plus dp dv ddp. So if these are the derivatives with respect to u and v, Let's see what the second derivatives are. Then we have, say, for the first term, if you take the derivative with respect to q of dh du, then this is the derivative with respect to q of minus dq du dp dt plus dp du dq dt. Now, taking the q derivative of what is in parentheses, what you have is minus dp dt t dq dq du minus dq du dq dp dt plus dp du dq dq dt plus dq dt of d dq dp du and now because of the symmetry of the second derivative that d dx df dy is equal to d dy of df dx we can swap here these derivatives, and that's what I have in the end. Now, the PDQ is equal to zero. Q doesn't depend on Q, so this term cancels. The same thing for the last term, it cancels. Now, the Q, the Q is equal to one. Same thing here, too. So if you take the derivative of this with respect to time, zero. The derivative of this with respect to U is also zero. So this first term here cancels. And the same thing is going to happen for the other terms. They're all going to cancel. And then the integrand is equal to zero. You therefore prove the Poincaré invariant theorem that the change in the area in phase space by the act of the Hamiltonian is equal to zero. If you have a surface in phase space as zero and the Hamiltonian acts on every point QP of this area, transforming it into another area as T, the area of these two surfaces is going to be the same.